boy, oh boy, do I have the DIY project of the year. I think I might. Here's the story. I've been looking for a new chair for my bedroom for like the past year and I had a pretty specific thing in mind what I wanted and I've been looking for so long that I was ready to just go buy a new one for like $300. And lo and behold, I walk into Goodwill and I find um this bad boy. I walk into the store and I see this chair for $9.99. This is basically what I've been looking for. And just when I was ready to give up, it just falls into my hands. So my plan, assuming my plan goes as planned, is to take this gross thing and turn it into this pottery barn chair that retails for basically a million dollars. Let's get started. So before I even start, I have to give credit where credit is due. In the description below, I'm gonna link a video where I kind of got this idea from. She was the one that showed me this technique, so if you watch my video and you're entertained, go watch hers because she also kind of does the same thing, so. There's the credit. So I've already started working on this chair and basically my goal is to make this look like a leather chair. This was the one side that I already did and I think it looks pretty leathery. So basically, this is that original cushion and I painted it to look like leather. All right, so before we get started, these are the things you're gonna need. First off, you're gonna need paint. This is just regular latex paint. I actually got the sample sizes and I got a satin finish. I got a satin finish, but you can use whatever finish you want. If you want your furniture to be a little bit more matte, you can use a matte finish, but I wanted my leather to look just a little bit shiny, so I got a satin finish. I have a couple colors here. I got the colors of leather. So I have light, medium, dark, and this one's even darker yet. You're also gonna need some fabric softener, a spray bottle, some sand paper. This is a 220 grit, so it's a little bit more fine. A brush, some sort of mixing utensil, and some disposable cups or bowls. And depending on your piece of furniture, you may or may not need a razor. So for this project, essentially what we're gonna be doing is mixing a concoction of fabric softener and paint together, and we're gonna be painting it onto this, which is going to create almost like a rubber-like finish to the fabric. At the very beginning, ideally, you would like your fabric to be as smooth as possible. The smoother the fabric, the better, the more tightly woven the fibers, the better it's going to be. If you have some sort of pilling on your furniture, I would recommend like shaving the little pill balls off. So before we get started, I want to point something out. My furniture, the fabric on this cushion, you can see it's kind of bumpy like the fibers are a little bit bumpier they're not super smooth that's fine but it's definitely going to be a little bit trickier ideally you would want fabric that's very smooth but because mine's not quite as smooth you can see that my leather look didn't come out quite as smooth so it's going to take a little bit more work if your fabric's not smooth but nonetheless it will still work as you've already noticed, I've painted the bottom of this one cushion. This is kind of like my little practice area, so it might be a good idea to practice this on the back of your furniture, on the bottom, somewhere you won't see it. But before I even did that, I did this first. I took some fabric swatches and I mixed different mixtures of paint and fabric softener. So when you mix the paint and the fabric softener together, it's almost gonna thicken the paint and create like a rubber-like consistency. Now this initial swatch, I mix just a little bit of fabric softener and mostly paint and it's kind of crunchy. So we don't want that. Here's another one. This mixture has a little bit too much paint. So it's still kind of crunchy like dried paint would be. Now over here, I have like the ideal mixture of fabric softener and paint. This was like two thirds paint, one third fabric softener. After doing this, it came out to a really soft, smooth consistency that I think is really ideal. Basically, you're gonna want to experiment to find the right consistency of fabric softener to paint. I've found if you use too much paint that it's gonna be kind of crunchy and it's not gonna have that leather-like consistency, but if you use too much fabric softener, it will always feel like a little sticky and it almost feels like the paint will never dry. So I found that 50-50 is a little bit too much fabric softener, but I think the golden ratio for the paint and fabric softener that I have, the golden ratio seems to be about two thirds paint and one third fabric softener. So I have little cups mixed up of that and let me show you what that looks like. So just to show you how this is gonna work, I'm gonna do two parts paint. So let's do four scoops of paint, three, four, and two parts, roughly, fabric softener. 
So when you first start to mix them, you can see it's pretty runny. Like it looks really watery. But the longer you start to mix it, the more it's gonna thicken up. And it's actually gonna get kind of rubbery, which is gonna leave that faux leather finish. Almost like a coating, but it's gonna be really soft. It's not gonna coat it in a crunchy way. And then that is what we're gonna be painting our furniture with. Now that we're on to the actual painting part of the process, this is what you're gonna need. I'm gonna be using a light brown. This is the one we just mixed. And then I also have a medium brown and a dark brown. These I mixed about a week ago. They're a little bit thicker, but I've been storing them in the fridge and they've been working just fine. Obviously we're gonna need a brush. That's a no brainer. The last thing we're gonna need is a spray bottle. I just got mine at the Dollar Tree. This is filled with one third fabric softener and two thirds water. I'll get to this part later. So obviously make sure your cushion's as clean as possible. Shave it if there's little lint balls, but this is the best way that I found to do it. I'm taking my lightest color first and I'm just slapping it on the cushion. And to help it spread a little bit better, for the first layer, I'm gonna mist it with a little bit of that mixture. The first layer, you're gonna need a lot of paint but it gets better after this, I promise. Audio Hub. Audio Hub. Audio Hub. Audio Hub. Once I have the majority of the surface done with this tan color, I'm gonna take the medium brown and I'm gonna kind of work that around the outside and sort of blend it in for a natural, sort of leathered look. I've noticed if you look at leather, a lot of times the center of leather, like the more worn area is gonna be a little bit lighter and then the creases will be a little bit darker. You're gonna wanna generously spray the corners and any sort of creases with this spray. This is really gonna help it soak into the fabric. Um, but not stick the creases together. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna go in a little bit with the darker brown too. Kind of rotate between the medium brown and the dark brown. At this point, we're gonna have to do a lot more layers of paint anyway, so if the first layer doesn't look pretty, that's totally fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, so I just finished my first layer of paint, and at this point, it's really more of a fabric paint. It's not leathered at all yet. It's gonna take a couple that's a lie. It's going to take quite a few layers of paint for it to get that leather finish that I have over there. Um, but for now, you can still see all the little fibers. That's totally okay. Um, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and we'll get to the next step soon. All right. And then you guys aren't going to see this part, but while I'm in the process of redoing the cushions, I'm also going to be redoing the wooden part. The wood is actually in pretty good condition, uh, except for that. It's actually in pretty good condition. It's a little bit worn, but it's really not bad. Um, so I don't have to redo it, but I kind of just want it to be a different color. So I'm going to stand that, stain it, and then um, you'll see that at the end. All right. I'm in my garage now. The first coat is dry. Here's where we're at. Okay, as you can see, my first layer of paint is dry. Here's the greenish area, this is the painted area. It pretty much feels exactly the same, and as you can also see, there is still that texture there. So I'm gonna go over it with another layer of paint, and I'm basically just gonna keep doing that, keep doing that process, until eventually this top texture will sort of start to smooth out. Okay, I just finished the second coat of paint, went much smoother than the first layer. Basically, I just put it all across the surface normally, and then I only used this spray around the creases. The more layers of paint you do, once you start to get that leather finish, you really don't need much spray. Um, the spray is really to help it adhere to the fabric. So once you get that plasticky coating going, you don't really need as much. All right, the second layer of paint is now dry. As you can see, there's a pretty good layer of paint, but there's still a ton of texture there, unfortunately. So at this point, I'm gonna take some sandpaper. This is a 220 grit. Basically, just with soft circular motions, I'm gonna sand until all those little pokey parts are gone, just until the fabric's smooth. And then once it's sanded, I'm gonna do another layer of paint. So I'm just gonna keep repeating that process, paint and then gently sand, paint and then gently sand. Audio Hub. Audio Hub. All right, I think this is the third coat, so I'm gonna sand and paint the fourth.
All right, fourth coat dry, moving on to the fifth. All right, fifth coat of paint is dry. I'm gonna sand and paint the sixth. All right, this is the sixth coat dry, and I think we are nearing the end. I just wanna point something out. I did mention earlier to make sure you sand in between every layer. That's really, really important so that the finish is smooth. But one thing that you should be extra careful of is to make sure you sand these edges down there. So either take the edge of your sandpaper or fold it and make sure you get in there. Okay, it has been literally like a week and a half of me painting this thing, layer after layer after layer. My two biggest takeaways, two biggest tips. One, sand between every layer. Every single layer needs to be sanded. It's just a light sand to get the little scruffies off. Sand between every single layer, it will make it so much smoother. Absolutely essential. Two, do not put too much fabric softener in your mixture because if you do too much, then your paints, your, your furniture is gonna feel sticky. So. 10 out of 10 recommend doing a practice round to make sure you have your mixture right. Don't do too much fabric softener. But anyways, I'm gonna show you uh, how I kind of finished it up. Okay, here it is. I just finished it. I finished the staining on the framework a couple days ago. So as you can see, it's a little bit darker. It's also just in better condition. The stain that I chose was Kona. So looks like this really beautiful, classic, rich, dark brown color. I love this sort of wood tone. Um, but anyways, to finish up this leather, you can see there's some variance in color. I kind of just took the brush and like splotched the colors and mixed them here and there just till I got the kind of look that I want. But anyways, this is the final look. It still has a little bit of texture as you can see. I don't think I'm gonna get rid of that. I don't, I don't think that's gonna go away. I think it's gonna have to be there. But like I said, if you have a smoother fabric, you can definitely get a smooth leather finish. But that's that. I will show you how it actually looks in my room once I bring it home. Okay, it is literally like two weeks later, but I finally got this chair home and into my bedroom. Here's how it looks. Okay, aside from the fact that this corner is in and of itself a design disaster, I think the chair itself looks really great. If you wanna see me redo this whole mess of a wall, stay tuned. That video for this whole part of my bedroom getting redone, I'm hoping that'll be coming up within the next couple weeks. I have really good plans. I think it's gonna look really good when I'm done with it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, especially if you want to see more content from me.